I think if you go back to the beginning of Matthew 24, the context for the chapter and the chapter 25, obviously it wasn't written as chapters in, in those days, is the questions that the disciples asked Jesus, which were uh, three things, but three linked things. You know, when will these things happen? In other words, the actual destruction of the temple. When was the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And that's, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the old covenant age. And Jesus is coming to end the old covenant age. They're all actually linked. And Jesus then goes on to give all sorts of signs of his coming. Now, in that context, when you have then certain things talked about, it is in the same context. He isn't shifting from one thing to another. And mm. when the language is used, um, you've got to understand, again, it's in the context of the generation that was coming and that the elect are those Jewish believers who left Jerusalem and escaped Jerusalem as Jesus warned them to do when they saw the armies coming. And you can find that also in Luke and other, other passages. So essentially those were the elect. You could also say those were the 144,000 of Revelation. Those were Jewish believers who followed Jesus, walked out of the Jerusalem is symbolically. It's a lot of symbolism here, leaving the old covenant, the old Jerusalem, the earthly Jerusalem, and then entering into the heavenly Jerusalem, effectively um, outworking that. So they, they are the elect. Um, and the talk about the angels gathering the elect. Well, again, it's like, don't think of it in the terms of the end of the world or the rapture. Think of it in a spiritual sense that during this period leading up to the end of the age, the messengers had gone out. Now, angels, we always tend to think of as the physical angels. Well, angels, actually, the word angelos really just means messenger. So you could see the messengers had gone out and the good news was being preached. And there were a whole lot of people gathered in who became the elect during that period of time between, you know, up to AD 70. So those are really the, the concepts there. And then you have language like lightning coming, you know, associated. Well, there's different ways of looking at that lightning. You could see, well, he's going to come quickly at, at the end, you know, because the lightning bursts, you know, and then it's that way. Um, but you could also actually see that the word lightning there can also be translated bright sunshine. And therefore, in context, the bright sunshine would be the light of the gospel being released during this period that then the angels or the messengers are bringing that truth and therefore the elect are being gathered in. Um, so again, the context is the same. Um, it's difficult now without really understanding the symbolism that they did to sort of to see it the way we do, particularly because we're conditioned by a lot of other teaching, which will say these things are referring to the rapture and the end of the world and those type of things. So also in in terms of that then when you've got one two in the field one left you're talking about again covenant language this was about the warning that jesus was coming they wouldn't know exactly when he's coming so be aware look for the signs and then be ready when he does come and just like with noah there were those who were ready and entered the ark and there were those who were not ready and didn't enter the ark and they were lost they were all there they were all living life and yet when the time came those who saw the sign of the rain coming um, which obviously there had been no rain on earth up until that point um, they then were Noah and his children and families they then went into the ark and were saved the same thing was true with those Jesus warned to leave Jerusalem there were two in a field one left Jerusalem and one was left and ended up being captured in Jerusalem and a lot of them ended up dying crucified and thrown into Gehenna during that period of the siege of Jerusalem leading up to AD 70. So then when you go on to parables, parables are obviously not analogies so they're not they're not supposed to be necessarily you take every single detail of the story and then trying to make a sense of it. Sometimes parables are about getting a point over and again when you're talking about Things like um, outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is not talking about hell. 
it's talking about outside of the covenant. The covenant was light. They were outside of the covenant. Therefore, they were in outer darkness because they didn't follow Jesus, who brought them into the light of the new covenant as the light of the world. So they rejected the darkness for the light and basically lived in outer darkness, which is outside of the covenant. Um, so a lot of things with that gnashing of teeth is about anger. And of course, they were angry um, that the gospel was going to the world. You know, they, they wanted this for themselves. They were angry, so they gnashed their teeth. And you get the same thing of when Stephen was talking and he was talking about heaven open. They gnashed their teeth in anger and then stoned him. Um, so when you then get to some of the parables, some of the parables are talking about Jesus's first coming in that there was 400 years of silence from the last prophetic word to his coming now those who knew the signs would would knew the 77 you know seven times 70 weeks of daniel 490 weeks or whatever so they were aware and obviously you had some were in the temple waiting for his coming looking for his coming but others were totally unaware and the whole religious system um was operating uh, in darkness if you like or a lack of prophetic release and then john the baptist comes and brings sort of prepares the way for jesus to come um, and then jesus comes as the light of the world and they rejected him so some of some of these things about being a long time it's the long time between the first his sort of the last prophetic word and him coming so they were waiting for the Messiah to come and there was a long time waiting. And in that time, they did a whole load of things which were not really aligned to what God had wanted them to do as being a light to the Gentiles and other things. And of course, they sort of turned the whole system into a rabbinical system. And, you know, Jesus had to come and say, you know, you've heard it said, but I say unto you. And so he had to challenge their whole view that rabbinical system had come out of the, of the Babylonian exile. There were no rabbis before that. They then had a whole lot of people who were then set up a system to tell them what to do or tell them what the Bible was saying or their old scriptures were saying. And they were very influenced by the Talmud, you know, the sort of Babylonian Talmud and all sorts of stuff. So there was a mess, basically. Um, so, you know, you have to read it in, in the context of what it's talking about. And again, it's covenantal language. And this is the key. Being outside of the covenant is really what it was all about. The old covenant is going to end. If you stay in it, you're going to be outside of what is the new covenant, which has been prophesied. And you know, don't read too much into the detail. Look at the big picture of what it's saying. You know, they had all this time to get ready before Jesus came to be ready for him to come and when he did come they rejected him and then they had a whole load of time where the light had gone forth and the message had gone out and the good news was being proclaimed and they still rejected the good news and followed their old religious system rather than entering into what jesus had warned them about and so then you've got the sheep and the goats i mean i've done there's a whole blog post on the sons of issachar blog about the sheep and the goats and goes into it in detail but again we're talking about nations here not people and we're talking about again those brothers are the same as the elect so the believing jews and how they are going to be treated will be a sort of sort of weighed and judged at the end of the old you know during that period now in a sense you know we we look into it and we look at all the details about the punishment and all that stuff and again it, it's not really talking about that um when you read it and the blog post will give you some more insight into the whole thing i know if you want answers to everything it's quite difficult to give you an answer um in a sense without sort of basically writing a book which is why i'm writing the book in in one sense so i can't give you everything here but what i will do is i will link you to i will attach to the to the uh, email that i send this out on with a link or with a document which is a 200 odd page document which goes into in detail the whole thing about the lightning coming from the east and the west and all of that stuff and all of the questions probably you're asking about how these things relate to the end of the old and the AD 70 and everything else and it goes into great detail it's probably 200 odd pages but it will give you some more insight 
than I can just give you in this short period of time. <clears throat> and in reality, I think I would go back to the father and just get the father's heart on this rather than trying to prove every different scripture, every different thing, which is quite hard to do from our modern day perspective when we're not living under the old covenant and when we probably don't have a full understanding of all the old covenant language you know where it talks about the vultures were gathered vultures will gather the corpses well the corpse was the old covenant and the vultures were the unclean birds who went to pick the the bones of the old covenant. well that is linking back to deuteronomy in the curses of the covenant you know and so without knowing that language you read that what is that all about there's a corpse and their vultures are gathering well, that was a sign again of the end of the old, the beginning of the new. And Jesus very clearly warned them to get ready when they saw certain things. Don't even go and grab your coat. Just get out, run. Now, history says, and you know, Josephus and other historians basically will, will have, have testified that no Christians actually were left in Jerusalem. They all fled to the hills of Pella and they were all saved. But actually the whole of israel was affected by that uh four-year siege and they chopped down all the trees i mean they were stripping the land you can imagine an army besieging a the thing they were stripping of the land so the thing about the for the sake of the elect was not even those who escape will be able to survive if this thing doesn't end and of course the tribulation did end and then there's no more tribulation to come in that way anymore if you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.